For Krima Media's policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is the program coordinator from the Peter Marisbeck Economic Justice and Dignity Group, Mervyn Abrams, to discuss the cost of living in South Africa. Mr. Abrams, uh, South Africans are paying nearly uh, 5,000 rand now for a basic uh, food basket, which is uh, 570 more than a year ago. How did we get here? So the Peter Maritzburg Economic Justice and Dignity Group, we we track the cost of a basket of food, 44 foods that women in low-income households across the country have told us they would prefer to buy every month should they have sufficient amount of money. Things like is meal, rice, bread, poloni, margarine, tomatoes, onions, potatoes, a bit of chicken, chicken feet, uh, pulchard fish, etc., uh, a stock and salt and, and so on. Uh, and over the past year, we have seen that basket increase significantly. And at the end of June, that ba- basket of food now stands at 5,056 rand and 45 cents, which is a slight decline on the month of May. Uh, uh, and it's a decline of about 15 rand. But when we look at the year-to-year increase, so what it cost us exactly a year year ago, then we see that that basket now costs 367 rand and 65 cents more than it did a year ago. And so the cost of this basket has increased significantly, uh, and we have to find ways of bringing the cost of this basket down so that we can begin to alleviate the the food affordability crisis, but also by and large the levels of household food insecurity that we are seeing across the country. And in your recent uh, findings, you have also said that the average cost uh, to feed a child has also increased uh, by 92 rand 11 cents in the past year. Now it cost around 864 and 6 cents a month for just a basic nutritious diet. Tell us about that. So essentially, uh, we track the cost of what it would cost to feed uh, a child, looking at the calories that would be required, looking at the nutritional levels. And and so exactly as you have said, we have seen massive, as the food basket has price has increased, as food prices have increased over the last two years or so, um, of course that translates into an increased cost to feed a child a nutritious meal, and that's gone up by over 90 rand over the last year. Whilst at the same time, we have seen that the child support grant has not kept up with that track. So the child support grant is in the region of about 460 rand. So what that actually means is that for those households, uh, and it's constantly increasing, those households uh, where, where they do not have sufficient levels of income, in order to afford sufficient and nutritious food that they cannot even depend on the child support grant uh, in order to feed the children a sufficient and nutritious meal. So the net result of that situation is what you would see in our stunting figures. So when you look at South Africa's children under the age of five, we, we will see that boy children uh, 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 have stunting levels of, of of something like about 25 to 30 percent of of all our boy children are stunted, and and similar levels to girl children, uh, and and that is a cost to the fiscus, but also to our society in large. So, for instance, when children are stunted through no fault of their own. They are more likely to be more sick and hence have to go to clinics and hospitals more often. 
And when they enter the labor force at the age of about 25, 26 years old, they are more likely to enter the labor force as laborers, meaning that they will then also earn the least amount of wages that our labor market offers to then consolidate and increase the intergenerational poverty line. They earn, they they grew up in households that didn't have enough money to buy sufficient food. Their wages were for them to provide sufficient food for their children. And so we see the intergenerational poverty traps increase, as well as it will have a major impact on our economic growth. Because children who are stunted and cannot utilize to the fullest effect our educational investment are likely not to be able to compete in the changing world of work and in the the new kind of industrial IT level of economy that that we will see in the future. So it will have a detrimental impact on South Africa's uh, uh, economic growth and and, and future uh, uh, employment. And, And that is why it is absolutely important that we that every child, every household has sufficient and nutritious food because what we put on the plate of our children today creates the economy for South Africa in 20 or 30 years from now. And now what would you say is a major factor when it comes to the rising in the cost of living? So what we have seen is we have seen, of course, since... Uh, COVID, uh, uh, the opening up of the global economy. We had seen at the beginning a lot of logistics constraints as as ships and trains and industry come back to life. There was a, a big bottleneck. And then, of course, immediately after that, we had the Russia-Ukraine conflict that deepened, of course, uh, and increased global commodity prices because we import uh, a lot of wheat, we import sunflower, we uh, import fertilizers from that part of the world. However, in the last six months or so, we have seen global commodity prices, particularly cereals, coming down. We have seen fuel prices coming down, and yet the food prices in South Africa has stayed stubbornly high. The only change or the unique feature of the South African economy has been increased load shedding, which of course has led to increased cost to farmers, to food producers and manufacturers. And and so unless we can really get our load shedding and our energy issues resolved, it is likely that that is having an impact on on food prices. Um, But according to our estimation, we should have already seen a drop in the prices of of food uh, and and we not seeing that. So uh, really we, we are concerned because the food value chain in South Africa is not very transparent. We know the, the farm gate costs. We also know what, ha- what the costs are at the retail end. But between that, there is a massive value chain. And it is really almost impossible to tell exactly at which stage of the value chain these increases are happening. And in fact, whether they are linked to load shedding or whether those increases are in fact justified or not, or whether it is a case of greedflation where where companies are taking uh, 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 exorbitant profits to make up for past losses. So at the moment, we're not able to truly give a proper sense of that, because we just do not have the data to that will allow us to make a proper assessment. So for the benefit of our viewers uh, who will be interested in knowing how um, these statistics are gathered, would you mind sharing that with us and then tell us how would you advise now South Africans who are already struggling? So it's really very difficult 
to advise South Africa, particularly those in low-income working-class households, but also by and large the middle class, because almost all South African households are feeling the impact of, of the cost of living uh, and the impact of increased interest rates by the Reserve Bank. And of course, we are entering in July higher uh, electricity tariffs um, and municipal tariffs. And, and we know that, for instance, uh, uh, electricity is a made at household level is a major input into the cooking process. I mean, you can't eat chicken unless it's cooked. You can't eat onions unless it's cooked. You can't eat potatoes unless it's cooked. So, so you have to have electricity. And it's our assessment that with this increased municipal services and electricity cost, what we are likely to see is that households are shifting uh, to wolf, taking money from the food budget in order to cover the increased electricity costs. And so while we are see, beginning to see a downward trend in food prices, it is but an increase in electricity prices, it could lead to actually a deepening of household food insecurity because food prices are not coming down at the level that electricity tariffs are increasing by. So really, what can we say to the South African consumer? Um, really, there is nothing more to say because all the belts have been tightened as much as it has been tightened. We also know that households, instead of eating three meals a day, are more and more eating one or two meals a day, which is bad for health. So, so really, there is very little wiggle room for the household. What we have to look is at the structural issues that are keeping prices high. And, and, and so we, we have to look at, at issues such as our food system. Um, where are we producing our food? Can we produce our food closer to the tables, nearer to the cities? We produce most of our tomatoes in Limpopo and we transport it all the way to Cape Town. So can we grow it closer and therefore cut out a lot of this logistics cost, mitigate against increased fuel prices? But these are all long-term changes. They're not short or medium-term changes. So, so until we, we have resolved these long-term issues, unfortunately, there is not much households can do but cut back on the amount of food they eat. Lastly, Mr. Abrams, what should be done by our government uh, to help rescue the situation? So government can play an important role. Uh, number one, government can play an important role to facilitate for, for the food producers an environment that could lead to lower input costs. So one would be, for instance, resolving the electricity problem that has been with us for years now. Can government summon the, the political will to actually resolve these structural issues? Uh, and, and, it, and it's connected to electricity and getting ESCOM sorted out. Uh, and number two, it also has to do with logistics, our railway systems. Our railway systems have been allowed to collapse. And in that, it adds costs to food because we are now have to transport food by road, uh, which is much more expensive. There is that level. Facilitate and make sure that the input cost for business is less, which could lead to less at the, at the retail level. That's one area. The second area is for government to actually support households in a much more focused and better way. The, the 350 Rand grant can only buy you 23 loaves of bread a month. That is all it can buy. So, so can we begin to look at our social security net, our child support grant, 
to see exactly how we can support households, particularly in food purchasing. And then the third area, which is a long term area, and that is how can we restructure our food system so that we produce food closer to home, we bring more players into the food economy, particularly black African women around our cities by making land available, by making knowledge available, so that we bring more people in to our, our food system and create more competition that can also bring prices down. Of course, that's a long-term process, but it's government responsibility to begin to look at those areas of interventions. There was coordinator from the Peter Maris Beck Economic Justice and Dignity Group, Mervyn Abrams, discussing the cost of living in South Africa.